people, I mean, they saw that they were making a ride, so they arrived with 30 Kalashnikov for five oh, tanks. Wow. Terrorism office uh, general, uh, big uh, police chef, they were the, all the most important guys mm. of Istanbul with me. <laughs> and uh, they were asking me what I was doing, and I was saying that I'm a director. They never saw a woman director, maybe? So I, every time that I was saying it was like, I, they were getting like, a, I'm an astronaut. Like they were shocked and they didn't understand. Welcome to Pop and Politics, your guide to art and culture in Turkey. I'm your host, Kenan Basad Sharp. Each week we host an artist, musician, director, writer, actor, or other creative worker in Turkey. And today we are joined by director and writer Azer Dinizokyay. After studying cinema at the Sorbonne Nouvelle in Paris, in 2013 she released her first short film, Little Black Fishes, which focused on migrants struggling to build their lives in a new country despite the bureaucratic and social obstacles. Her 2016 short, Sulukule Monomor, focused on the historical Roma neighborhood of Sulukule in Istanbul through the everyday lives of two young women. In 2020, she released her first full-length film, Hayaletlar, or Ghosts. The film won the International Film Critics Week Grand Prize at the Venice Film Festival, and then it swept through Turkey's Golden Orange Film Festival where it won Best Film and Editing, and Okiai was also awarded Best Director. Since then, the film has continued to win awards and interest across the world. The action of Ghosts takes place on a single day in October. The film begins with the sound of a radio bulletin declaring that Istanbul has turned into a war zone. After a power cut cripples the city, riots and looting break out, there are police checkpoints across the city and helicopters surveying from above. This setting and the four intersecting lives it follows provides the perfect atmosphere for exploring the anxious reality behind what the government rhetoric describes as the new Turkey. Azer Deniz, welcome to the show. Hello. Thanks so much for coming. A pleasure. So I want to talk to you about ghosts first of all. So a lot of people, me included, when I first saw the film, I, I read it as a sort of dystopia of kinds. Mm -hmm. And I've read subsequently in your interviews, you say it's actually, it's not a dystopia at all. And I find that really interesting because if, you know, this kind of power cut broke out like that, you could actually see really some of the things happening in the streets of Istanbul. So I'm curious about, you know, is it for you a realistic film? What aspects of, of Turkey today were you trying to portray in the film? Um, I wrote this film in four or five years. And making a film, of course, it's hard, but making it... Uh, every time I was writing, Turkey was uh, changing, so at some point it became kind of a big uh, bubble. I was feeling that it's going to explode at some point in many uh, reasons. So uh, for me, this uh, film, it's uh, maybe many little things, but it's just one emotion. So art is making it uh, happen. Um, this um, this public art, it's maybe a metaphorical uh, thing, but also physically, like you are getting out the light of a city. Mm. So it's really happened in Turkey in 31 March 2015. So I remember like having uh, in 70 cities in Turkey, there were no lights. And uh, the morning we began the, our journey and uh, the night we ended up with another big news. So I was inspired also for getting this emotion of trying to survive. Um, after uh, Noemi Klein's shock doctrine, so it is about like uh, when you're having, you, you have a one shock and then you have other shocks. You don't even remember the first one. So it is uh, my journey in Turkey as a young generation also, but uh, feminine queer vibes, Lee. I mean, we, we, we need to bring our lights on this darkness. So physically it was uh, also like uh, getting out a light on a movie. It's making also technically uh, you, you need to be perfect. It's not just about writing stories, but also bringing your new, uh, new technique cinematically. So it, it was my biggest uh, point for making this film. Um, the director Inari too is saying uh, that writing a movie, it's like writing a poem in a roller coaster. <laughs> But I think that this, um, in Turkey, I was trying to write a poem, but also having a cup of tea. 
<laughs> and a roller coaster. It's really, it's you need uh, you need to bring a big concentration of emotion. You need to uh, get a big uh, maturity to thinking the future and also bringing new tools. Um, I can't, uh, I couldn't live in my in my space. They were getting out my space all the time. So I wrote this story this way and also impact also the Turkish cinema for my way. But I didn't think that it could be uh, awarded like that. It was just uh, for me. Uh, first of all, like a war photographer, I was trying to get many pictures for understanding which kind of war I was uh, trying to see with my friends and my generation. So it was really this kind of emotion how I made it. And when life is ended up, the art is beginning. I mean, so it was uh, this part of my life. Absolutely. What I archive, yeah. I love that image of the warrior photographer as, as what, your, what your action was in making this film. And I know the conditions were really often difficult. You described making the film with very little funding, almost like a, in a guerrilla or like a punk way. Mm. I'm curious what the conditions were like when you were filming. What were some of the difficulties or challenges? I didn't get uh, Turkish uh, Ministry of Culture funds mm -hmm. for many reasons. And uh, so I, uh, I decided to to build the film in another way. Uh, when I was talking with a Turkish and French producer, they were talking about um, some some money. So uh, after four years, I, I could just get getting uh, the 10% of the money. So it was at this time $70,000, which is still nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so with Dilek Aydan, my, my young producer, and um, we decided to, to ma make the pre-production and the production. So it's I before this uh, short films I made also many um, documentaries, commercials, so I, and I'm coming from video art, so I know uh, basically very well how to making movies uh, because if I was just getting out from a short film, I couldn't end it up with 17 days of uh, shooting. Uh, you need to be perfect. Uh, you need to know which kind of problem you can have in 17 days of shooting. And also you need to protect your team uh, because it's really harsh, so tiring, and you need to get many ideas before the problem arrives. So thankful to my team, which they were so professional, but we know uh, that it was uh, 17 days of uh, really kind of uh, building a miracle. So, and then uh, we were lucky, uh, Venice Film Festival, so the film, the first draft of the film, uh, so they decide to asking us to their festival. So before finishing the film, even uh, nobody see on a festival. We didn't send it to the festivals. Normally, it's like that. We we didn't uh, finish the editing of sound or color. Uh, so we arrived uh, on their festival and. Uh, other fans uh, heard about a young team who was uh, finishing a movie and we made it in 17 days, which is really complicated. Um, they said that it was just a miracle. So, and it was kind of a new uh, mentality to making a movie and also bringing new characters and story. So my story, it's like that. I don't recommend it to making <laughs> 17 days movies, mm -hmm. but for sure it was kind of a manifesto. And you also made this, you know, not only in 17 days, but in this crazy city around buildings being demolished. And mm -hmm. you had a lot of scenes of, you know, have a scene with fire and different kinds of things like that. I mean, I'm sure it was really difficult on the ground. So difficult, but you need to uh, be so uh, calm, like a Buddhist temple, <laughs> you know, because... Um, like I was saying, my, my team was so uh, important for me that I, I decided to be so uh, more stronger. And, I mean, when you are a woman director, of course, you don't need, uh, you, you cannot show your uh, fear, your anger. It's another problematic that I don't have time for talking about it. But for sure, uh, like I remember like just cutting a light of a uh, area, you need to be involved with the municipality. But a uh, few days before the municipality can say yes or no, I was calling my DOP um, on the tree on the morning saying, okay, if the municipality, we can't reach them, you need to find the solution B, C, D, E, 
for just cutting the lights on this area. So, and he was like, yeah, no, we can reach the municipality, but the day we couldn't reach because they were in, a, I don't know, strike or something. So we use our, our technique. So we cut the cable and we bring you it You cut back. it yourselves? Yeah, 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 I mean, not me, the team, but yeah. I make them learn a few days before. Like it's, you're on the time, on the alarm way, but it's really like, um, going to a war like with like a Fatih Sultan Mehmet <laughs> conquering <laughs> the Istanbul. Yeah. I need to make it really in a way. Uh, also, we get some authorization uh, from the municipality for shooting it. We were not um, banned, but um, because we were shooting in Gulansu, uh, the area, it was a little bit um, crowded a few years ago. Um, Suddenly, when we put fire on the place, um, the police people, I mean, they thought that they were making a riot, so they arrived with 30 Kalashnikov for five oh, tanks. Wow. Yeah, it was really tough, uh, but I was just shooting um, the big uh, long scene when they're arriving to the area for b where it's burning. So I get been, uh, I get been arrested. Uh, my assistant called me that the 30 Kalashnikovs were being pointing to them. So you are getting out from your car for talking with a guy who was arresting you with five other guys. Uh, they were the terrorism office uh, general, uh, big uh, police chef. They were the, all the most important guys mm. of Istanbul with me. <laughs> and uh, they were asking me what I was doing, and I was saying that I'm a director. I think that I, I said it uh, four or five times. Uh, they didn't believe you. They didn't believe you. That it was, first of all, um, they never saw a woman director, maybe. So I, every time that I was saying it was like, I, they were getting like, a, I'm an astronaut. Like they were <laughs> shocked and they didn't understand. So and this, on this same time, there is a chaos with the 30 Kalashnikov. So this is one of the part of the story, yeah. but you need to be really, really, um, I mean, you need to find every solution step by step because uh, I know that it can happen at some point because I never made my movies in a, cool way everything was always so hard and of course being a woman in turkey it's, you are um teaching yourself that everything can collapse in one minute after so you're all the time so you need to be uh you, you need you need to bring your system of for existing so that's why we we show up like that at, at the end of the movie and even the team was uh, so happy to finishing a movie <laughs> and so happy uh, to making a film like that. It was really uh, interesting, uh, another way uh, to making a movie. Yeah, Definitely, yeah. Us, yeah. And then the conditions also when the movie came out were quite different because suddenly there was a pandemic, right? Yeah. I'm really curious how that affected um, you know, the film afterwards, the showing of it, the reception. Um, you know, things have gone a lot more digital since then. I'm curious of the good sides of that, the bad sides. Yeah, there were the pandemic. We were just finishing uh, the first draft, so um, and then uh, suddenly everything shut down. And I remember the first week, I didn't think about my movie, of course, and I was just trying to help the hospitals. Uh, I, suddenly, I began to organize masks and disinfectant things. So I was sending ten thousand masks to the other side. I was asking money from people because I, I, I made this organization with my movie. Maybe suddenly in one week I was helping hospitals, uh, talking with the doctors on the night and wow. what they need, needed. And then I forget completely my, my real job, but they were like, who are you? I was like, yeah, it's um, an organization. So then I arrived uh, after a few weeks. Uh, they said maybe, uh, I, yeah, at this moment, Venice Film Festival so and they wanted the film and we were like, okay, now we need to finish the film. So with a big uh, depth of money that we get, we try to finish the film and then we arrived to France because last uh, post-production found for uh, the color and the sound editing, we get it from Fr France. We finished a few days before the festival of Venice Film Festival. And then uh, like when I arrived to Venice, um, I remember as a Turkish citizen, I couldn't reach even the Italian consulate. So I passed from Paris for going to Venice. Even this story was completely chaotic for us. But when I arrived to Venice and then, um, and then, uh, 
we get the biggest award. I mean, uh, everybody was so happy. Like, it was um, like uh, you are sending a little stone in a lake when you're watching the aura of the lake. Suddenly, for me, it was like a tsunami. Uh, the hope and the love of people who send me message, thousands of messages, suddenly I realized that this is the, what is it, making um, uh, hope on the life of the people. So I, I realized that it's biggest um, uh, award. And in the pandemic, making this, m made this film maybe in this form. Like this is a kind of a little... A uh, little light that uh, that we which we bring, but it also it's so political and technically it's really uh, another form of as a movie. So I, I really suddenly believe on uh, on the cinema, uh, how cinema can impact the the people life, can change the life, and with the online um, suddenly we we passed the online thing and we we um, we said yes to movie movie.com uh, is really an um, online platform and I was so happy um, I met uh, Effie Chakara at some point and uh, we He's were the founder of movie right yes uh, and uh, I was saying to to him uh, thank you by the way because I just realized that my movie uh, it was maybe this time the best moment uh, on my life could be maybe reached by and watched by a a young person in Batman or Martin because Mubi was uh, free for uh, for a while at this moment. Mm. So people who couldn't go to the cinema, I mean, even this in this city, there is no more cinema, you know, like or this film couldn't go there. <laughs> Suddenly in the village, I mean, even uh, we could um, touch people's life. That's incredible. This is, yeah, that's why it was really interesting for me at this moment. Um, now our online platform is changing, but it was the best way to uh, to getting a connection with people. That's why I get also a lot of message from months um, and people were trying to uh, get in contact with me. Uh, they were saying that they were not feeling alone. I mean, it was really interesting for me. It was uh, more than I expect uh, what was happening, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I'm curious too about, so you mentioned the awards that happened internationally for the film. It got watched by a lot of people. I know that was probably really inspiring for a lot of aspiring directors, especially women who want to be in the sector. Um, you've talked in other places about the challenges, and you mentioned a little bit previously, uh, being a woman and being a director in this moment where still most of the, 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 you know, the industry is still dominated mostly by men, and a lot of the awards are still mostly given to, to male directors. Um, I'm curious about that part for you, what challenges you faced both in, I think you worked in advertising before, and then also in the film sector, what mm -hmm. it's like being a, a woman director. Yeah, the thing is that uh, as an artist, uh, when I was doing video art, um, video art is uh, being alone and you're working alone and, uh, and you're kind of working on your laboratory and you're making your tools. So I, I was so lucky to discovering this on my life. And then uh, when I arrived to my, with my system, the team uh, was so nice with me, but I can see that they never work with a woman director. So at some point they can, it can be prob problematic for them. But we, we get a connection from the few hours. It was uh, okay for me because I di direct many, many people uh, for years. Um, but for sure in the cinema, in Turkish cinema, there is a problem in the last 20 years. I believe that I like the, this is a little bit par parallel. I don't want to accuse people, but in the last 20 years, the cinema, it's really uh, kind of a pastoral and uh, just guys movies mostly. There are just few directors who is non, not a male director, hetero male director, but the mostly they arrive. So when you're arriving alone and you are arriving it, uh, with a movie where there is uh, women, there are uh, also male hetero, but I mean, you're bringing uh, other characters. People are, react like we, we were provocating them or we were trying to, I don't know, it was really harsh uh, to understanding why they were reacting like that. Even I can say like everybody was uh, writing about us, uh, even uh, right side, Yin Shafak, 
or of course left sides. But at some point, uh, the two team were asking me or saying there is so many women in the film. <laughs> yes. So uh, and you're, I mean, you're answering or not, but for sure you're losing your time to answering kind of questions because. Yeah, there is a lot of women on this world. I mean, uh, in this building, in the street, we're everywhere and we are uh, living. We are having uh, stories. And um, as a woman director, uh, answering that, uh, even in the festival, sometimes um, it's really uh, make me uh, talk that there is a big problem. Like mm. you can see that even technically you're answering a one question you need to answer it three times in a Q&A sometimes mm -hmm. because um, people uh, think that maybe you couldn't make it alone or because uh, you look like uh, younger or I was really feeling like a zebra out of the zoo you know like uh, you're like but we are learning together and uh, the problematic is um, because of this um, problem of 20 years, uh, like before in 80s or 90s, there were a lot of films with women characters in Turkish cinema. So there is a, even a, many dialogues, many uh, different uh, connectionships. It was uh, not just a woman who is a wife of someone or, or get been raped and she's maybe talking or not in a movie. You know, it's really been making like that. In um, Turkish literature, um, last 20 years, there is more books and there is more uh, new characters, different stories. But in the cinema industry, there is a problematic like that. Mm. So I think that um, when you're making a movie, you're also kind of a little educator. So bringing new characters or new stars and new, not, we are not new, but bringing it uh, became a kind of a game of thrones, really. Like it's really, uh, you, there's no um, much found. So when you're arriving or not, it's really trying to get a space. And um, it's became kind of a big, big, big uh, war for some people. But I think that we have space for everybody. And um, I think that when we are we are learning from our differences. Uh, we are learning from um, many uh, different point of view, opinion, and we are building new system. Otherwise, uh, we cannot go, we cannot develop ourselves, uh, even for a country. So I believe that there is a big problematic like that, but I can see it in the in this um, political way, if uh, they are canceling Istanbul Convention. So how can I exist as a director? So this is so typical. So even in the left side, you can see people that they are just criticizing you like a mansplaining way for make you feel less. But we will at some point exist and we will bring our, our techniques. They, they need us and we don't need their improvement, I think. And we are all going by our sides as a feminist and LGBTQA because um, this is just, um, I can say, a beginning for, um, for our democracy. Uh, maybe it's kind of a game of thrones, but for sure every day we are getting stronger for talking because every day our space is being pushed to be uh, limited. And um, yeah, uh, it's not been just on the Middle East way or Turkey or I, I feel that this generation is also bringing a new way to thinking like even us, uh, we are feminism and LGBT are together in Turkey, but we can uh, we, we, we are becoming also kind of a icon to thinking about um, identity movements and democracy way. Uh, even Europe can have uh, some um, some example from us. I don't think that we are just in a space. We are really uh, being uh, being pushed to to think uh, another way. Uh. Yeah, I'm. I'm also curious about the the themes of the city and and urban space in your films. So I know you were born and raised in Istanbul. You shot a short film about the neighborhood of Sulukule, this historically Roma neighborhood that was demolished, and there was a big struggle to to save it. And then also in in Ghosts, 
you know, you focus on these areas that are being demolished and the way, you know, urban space transforms. I'm curious about those themes in your, in your work or in your life about the city and the way Istanbul is constantly being kind of re destroyed and rebuilt. Hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I began to learn that when I was so young, a hmm. uh, kid, uh, because uh, my parents are architect and urban planner. Um, I lived a little bit in Mardin. Uh, my father was a member of UNESCO. So I entered to every house, every, and I, we speak with uh, every family. So I learned a lot of stories when I was young. So, and then, uh, I also learned like that, that when you're protecting an area, a building, you are also protecting the human being and the stories. So growing up, um, I discovered that Turkey was at some point demolished without uh, laws. So you couldn't uh, really protect, but even there were some laws, uh, they were really destroying. Like Sulukule, it was an area, Romani area, uh, the most old area of Europe, uh, Romani way. So there is a, a cultural heritage. Was uh, my father uh, Ismet Oke and Mücella Yapıcı was uh, the leaders for trying to make it survive because they were really believing to making it um, democratic way. As an example, even. Uh, uh, architecture in urbanistic way, uh, something, and they uh, destroy it. And uh, I wanted to see what was happening there. A few years after, and I discovered the two girls who I, I shot the film Sulukule Munamur, and also um, bringing these two stories in a way like. There were, uh, this time of Turkey, uh, there were a lot of helicopter sound all the time in, mostly in Istanbul. And I bring some Nirvana song covering with, in piano with, uh, I played with the helicopter sound, uh, rhythm and I made this girl, uh, talk and, um, filming her body with a slow motion for, for not making a, like a object. And this, the, this two girls argument impact, uh, Turkish young generation again. Uh, I, I saw that, uh, it get been, uh, shared many times in, we were in 2016, 17, I think, um, at this moment there were no TikTok and stuff, but <laughs> we get been shared 30,000 times or wow, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was really nice. And I understand that when they are getting out or speaking, uh, the space, we need to bring our space. So that's why I also made the first uh, stones of my movie ghosts. But uh, yeah, the city is kind of an identity at some point. When you're destroying it, they were also bringing their building. So they were bringing a, a building without identity. So now Istanbul, Diyarbakir, everything is so similar. This is really uh, so, um, so unhappy thing. So it's not going to come back, um, making uh, one identity, it's not a solution and people cannot believe on their future. I am not an anthropologue or sociologue, but I really analyze that with my youngness way. And also you cannot be different or you can't be uh, rich on culturally way. I, I grew up in Abbasa, Beşiktaş, where everybody was so mixed uh, and I really enjoy it. Um, it was kind of a rebellion to be different and it <laughs> was a kind of a bigger um, emancipation to be together and being different. But now what's going on, it is not architecturally or technically good. It's not, uh, Istanbul is a megapole who cannot reach, uh, all these uh, building stru structures and it's collapsing. So, um, what I show it, it was just a tiny nano story way. It with one emotion. Uh, <laughs> and then last of all, I know a lot of people are curious, I don't know if you can tell us, but if you're working on anything new at the moment, if you have new projects coming. Yes, I'm working in two projects and they will be more, um, more harsh than Ghost maybe, because um, yeah, new techniques, new, um, new ideologies, uh, we need it uh, to bring new thing. I think um, a story and art have to be uh, more uh, and a new uh, soul at some point. We cannot just reach uh, to tell the stories. We need to bring a new soul, a new future. And 
a book or a, an art form is there for make you think more than the reality what is it and bringing your reality at some point absolutely and that's what ghosts did for a lot of people i think so i'm, I'm curious to see what whatever you do next um yeah i mean just we will see yeah absolutely <laughs> well azar denis thanks so much for coming on the show it was a pleasure to talk to you thank you so much for having me